In this segment, we're going to prepare the graphical user interface for our PhoneGap app. This video is brought to you by Pies Academy. I've got the index.html that we created a few moments ago up, and I'm going to go ahead and load that into my text editor. Now, because this was generated for the sample PhoneGap app, there's actually some superfluous code in here. We're going to start by cleaning this up. Now, if we look at the top, we've got some meta tags, and these are designed to make the screen on the web browser embedded in PhoneGap act more like an app versus acting like a web browser. So, for example, they set the viewport to scale at 100% only. So you can't use the pinch gesture, for example, to reduce or increase the size of the content on the screen. This style sheet was part of the template, so we're going to get rid of that. And I'm going to change our title to Chuck's Joke App, because we're, of course, doing a joke generator application. All right, so all of this, with the exception of the link to Cordova.js, also is gone. Cordova.js is the actual library that's going to be loaded in when all of this is compiled. And that's PhoneGap. Cordova is essentially the Apache version of PhoneGap. They're pretty much parallel versions. So the file that's loaded in is called Cordova.js, but you can think of that as PhoneGap. And there we go. Now we've got our basic document structure that we can use to build on for our app. Now, I like using for quick, clean mobile visuals, jQuery mobile. If you go to jQuery mobile in Google, there's a fast way to get at the jQuery mobile files. Here at jQuerymobile.com, click download. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. You can download all of the files in a zip, or you can use this CDN hosted version where the actual jQuery libraries are accessed dynamically. Because this is quick, we're going to go ahead and do this. Now, before I actually made this into an app that uh, we would put in the store or a production app, I would actually eliminate this and download all these libraries locally. And then we would attach them instead of accessing them via HTTP colon whatever, we would just access the local file that would be part of our actual app. So this is a little quicker for the purpose of our educational video here, but in the real world, you'd probably want to download these. All right, so now we've got our jQuery attached. So let's just go ahead and test and make sure this is working. So we're going to make part of our interface a get joke button. It's going to be a very, very simple interface for our Chuck Norris joke generator. Now, we know what the button looks like default in HTML, but here, because we've hooked up the jQuery library, it should look uh, more mobile friendly, for lack of a better word. All right, so let's go ahead and now we're going to test our index.html in the browser. And it looks like our button right now is not having any of the jQuery styles applied. So we can go here into our developer tools. And we can look at the console and you can see why. So you see here it says refused to load the style sheet because it violates the following content security policy. So sometimes you're going to get this and I want to show you how to fix it if you do get this message. So it's indicating line 41. So it's just not loading our style sheet because there's a security policy violation. What I'm going to do is here on line 30, you see this content security policy meta tag for right now. I'm just simply going to comment it out. All right. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and again, test our code in a browser. And now you can see jQuery has successfully styled the button. The button goes all the way across. Now, the other thing we'd want to do here in our developer tools, you might not be aware of this, but your developer tools can actually emulate mobile devices. So let's go ahead and emulate a mobile device. You want to make sure that this toggle right here that I'm pointing to 
is on, and you can choose which type of mobile device you'd like to emulate. So if we went for an iPhone 6, etc. But if everything's right, you should see your button stretch across the screen because it's being styled by jQuery Mobile. Now, a couple more things I want to do here in the interface. So we've got our get joke button. We also need a place for the joke to be displayed. So I'm going to create a div that I'm going to ID as joke. And later when we get the actual joke from the Chuck Norris joke server, it's going to be displayed right there. I want to put an ID on the button. So we're going to add ID BTN get joke. And of course, this ID will allow this button to be accessed through the JavaScript that we're going to write. All right, so we've got our div for the joke. We've got the get joke button. Now there's one more thing here. If you look carefully at the actual screen, you may have noticed this. If I click uh, the get joke, or excuse me, if I click refresh here, the button is right up against the edges of the screen. And we probably want a little bit of buffer space. So I'm actually going to use another jQuery mobile structure known as a page. So I'm gonna set a logical division here. And this data role call is part of jQuery mobile. And we're going to surround our content with this page div. So that's identified through data role page. Now, the other thing I want to do here is I want to create a header and a footer that makes this look more like a typical mobile app. So again, we're going to do a div here. Data role is going to be header. And in here, we can put whatever content we want to appear in the header. So I'm just going to put, let's see, in an H2, Chuck Norris joke generator. Now, you probably want to use this page structure with all of your actual jQuery mobile styled content. It just works better. Let's get below the button. And now we're going to put footer. And I'm just going to put the name of my company here. All right, so we've got our header and our footer. Now, the main content also goes in a section. And that, of course, that data role is main. So we're going to put that right here above our joke div. That gets data role main class UI content to style that. And believe it or not, we already have now a simple mobile app styled. So let's take a look in the browser. I'm going to refresh. And notice now the button has some nice buffering around it. It doesn't look as out of place. Now this footer should be stuck to the bottom of the screen. So we're just going to add one more piece of code to do that. So I'm going to add a style element. And inside the style element, I'm putting these two rules. The first one is for the data role page. We want the page to be 100% and position relative. And then for the footer, we want it positioned basically bottom zero, position absolute, which makes sure that it gets glued to the bottom of the screen. And with that little bit of CSS, you'll see now that this looks a lot more like a mobile app. So there's our footer. There's our get joke button. There's our header. Looks like we're doing pretty good here. So let's do one more thing. Let's see what this looks like on the actual phone. All right, since I've already got my PhoneGap app running, we can take a look at the screen of my phone and we'll go ahead and connect. And that'll load our Chuck Norris joke generator app that we've got so far and looks pretty good. We've got our uh, actual button here. We've got our header and our footer. Looks like the header and footer need a little bit of work, 
But for right now, I think we're good to move on to the actual meat of our project. So once you've got your user interface going, you should be ready to move on to the next section in which we're going to create the actual JavaScript, which makes the app work.